Hi New Life Youth, it's Courtney here and I am so excited that you are joining us today for another week of our Kingdom People series. Today we've got James. Howdy. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same thing I did last time. <laughs> um, James is our incredible Kids Life pastor, all round top bloke. Wow. Um, <laughs> and we, today we are going to be talking about how we can live our lives, how we can live lives that are distinct from others which is really important to talk about when discussing Kingdom People. Before we go any further though, how about we listen and read the passage of scripture for today. Teaching about salt and light. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. I think when looking at this passage of scripture, there are two things that Matthew points out um, and he compares kingdom people to. And the well, first- Jesus did. Well, Matthew Jesus did. It, yeah. Yeah, same but thing. they are <laughs> salt, and salt and light. light. And when looking at salt, I feel like these are two random things to compare kingdom people to. But James, when looking at salt, why do you think Jesus made kingdom people compar comparison to Salt. Kingdom salt. To salt. Well, I mean, obviously in their society back then, salt was important in preserving food and all the things like that. But salt also, um, it stands out. It's distinctive. You can tell, like for example, I can tell when they haven't put enough chicken salt on my chips. How? One, because they taste crap. Two, because <laughs> I can see that there's not enough chicken salt yeah. on my chip. And so I think when it comes to thinking, you know, why kingdom people like salt? We're, we're called to be like salt because we're called to stand out. Yeah. we're called to bring a, a proverbial taste in people's mouths that um, is better than when it's absent. Uh, and we mm. do that by living as kingdom people and all the mm. other stuff that we're talking about um, in this series. So yeah. that's why we're talked about like salt because salt stands out and mm. adds a different flavour. But yeah. why do they compare us to life? Well, just quickly, just oh, on go. the salt thing, because I think it's important to note though, when talking about calling us to stand out, it's actually not standing out like we're not actually called to stand out for our sake. It's I not about making- I literally have that written down right here as well. And you, we don't yeah, stand out for it. our own benefit and yet I didn't read it. <laughs> Yeah, go. Um, yeah, we're not called to stand out for our own benefits. It's actually not about making us look good or anything like that. We're called to, it, it's about being so different that people can notice that there's something different, you know? That we should be people that people, that other, hmm. We should be people that other people watching go, there's something different about them. Yeah. And it's not about that we're doing anything to make ourselves look better or stand we'll be out or better. anything. Salt doesn't try and make itself look salty. You know, salt is actually, just you know, itself. it just adds a bit of, bit of flavour. So it's actually not about us is the point of that. Yeah, it's about but, standing out to then point people to Jesus. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But light. Light. Slightly different. Slightly, Slightly different. Slightly different. I mean, obviously light still stands out. You can yeah. still notice it. But also when you think back in Jesus' time, they put, he calls us a city on a hill yeah. in the passage. And um, cities and towns were placed in a geographical space where they were noticeable. Yeah. So particularly when you were traveling or you were walking around at night, you could actually see where you were going yeah. and that the light of the city actually represented hope. It represented yeah. comfort. It represented a meal, a bed, and all of these things that you would be longing for as yeah. a traveler. And so when Jesus, calls us to be the light of the world and to be like a city on a hill. It's actually saying, hey, you need to be the beacons of hope. You need mm. to be the beacons of love, of grace, of yeah. extending all things to all people so that when they do look at the way that you live differently because you stand out because you're salt, this, the way you stand out is actually a way that communicates hope, hope and yeah. God's love and acceptance and purpose and all of those mm. amazing things that you get when you become a follower of Jesus and you become a kingdom person. Yeah, and again, not for our benefit. I think that's the key to all of this as well. But James, like, okay, so we're called to be salt, we're called to be light, we're called to be, like, we're called to stand out and we're called to bring hope. But what, how? 
Like, it's all good and well to say, you're called to stand out, you're called to be a light, you're called to be hope. Like, how do we actually practically yeah. live that out in our day-to-day -day lives? Yeah, it's not just about, um, you know, being, you know, saying a nice word a day to people. It's yeah. not just about, you know, being nice to our friends. It's not just about, you know, not arguing on social media. Although those things are great. Don't argue on social media. It's yeah, pointless. I was about to say that's but, great. <laughs> but it's also about standing out and the biggest difference that we can bring to our lives mm. as kingdom people versus people who aren't kingdom people is actually the way we love our enemies. And yeah. Jesus goes on to say that in the passage and he says, so love your enemies as, you know, I have loved you. And, you know, don't wait to be loved, to give love. Mm. Actually respond to hate with love. Yeah. It's so countercultural, especially I think our culture tries to tell us that, you know, love everybody and be kind to everybody. But culture also puts very distinct <laughs> markers in place around acceptance, yes. around what's okay and not okay and whether you're in or whether you're out. Yeah. Um, whereas what we can do is love our enemies. Yeah. And the best way you can love your enemies, really practically, just don't hold a grudge. Yeah. Just don't hold a grudge. There, you might be in a situation where you've had friendship breakdown. You might be in a situation where there's not a great family relationship and all of these things. And I'm not saying that it's about forgiving and forgetting and, you know, not addressing issues that come up. Mm. But it's about not holding a grudge in a way that's going to impact the way you can be salt and light to that one person. Mm. Yeah. Well, and I think also we've, we've spoken about in previous weeks about actually like love gets close enough to know. I think that was something a couple of videos back and it, it's about actually getting close enough to the people um, to love them well. And, you know, that we're going to be encountering people in our day to day lives that we don't understand, that we may not agree with. And it's really easy to just stick with the people that are comfortable and to stick with the people that love us and that like are safe. But sometimes it's really important to actually Actually, like get close enough to the people that we don't agree with to be able to love them because I think when you get close enough to those people that you struggle with they no longer become someone that you can just like point a finger at yep. but they become a person that you actually get to know see how Jesus loved them you get to know like what you, you know you get to know the like more intricate details of their life and it becomes a lot less like it becomes really hard to actually hate them and it becomes a lot easier to love when you get close to them. Um, and and so I think loving your enemies and loving people who aren't the same as you, it's not about affirming all of their yeah. choices. It's yeah. not about affirming all of their feelings, all of their points of view, yeah. all of their whatever. It's actually about loving someone enough that even though you may disagree, you're committed to their good. Yes. And part of, yeah. part of their good is having a healthy relationship with you yep. because whether they are a kingdom person or not, you have a responsibility as a kingdom person yourself to be the salt and the light yep. in that relationship. If you're both kingdom people and even if you still disagree, amazing because you're both being salt and light to each other. Yeah. But then when you come across people who you disagree with who may not be kingdom people, even more important for you to be the salt and light in that relationship yeah. and not be the reason someone turns around and says, I'm never going to be a kingdom person because kingdom persons do X, Y, Z. Yeah. Or because this, I've had blah, blah, blah. We only ever want to leave a great taste in people's mouths off the back of our relationship or our friendship or being part of each other's lives. Mm, um, like and chicken salt. You know, like chicken salt. <laughs> We're back to chicken salt. <laughs> There's too many more important things to do than yeah. hold grudges and respond to hate with hate. Yeah. Um, you know, there are things so much to do our time with our effort and with our mental health than to hold grudges and to hate our enemies. Mm. Like actually it's gonna be better off on our time, better off on our energy, better off on our mental health if we actually respond to hate with love, with salt and light yes. to every single person as kingdom people mm. and we love our enemies. New Life Youth, this week I pointed like with wiggles. New Life Youth. <laughs> <laughs> this week. <laughs> New Life Youth, this week, can I encourage you, work out how you can be salt and light in your school, in your family, in your friendship groups. What does it look like to stand out in those situations? Like if you're with people, what does it look like to be living your lives in such a way that makes other people go, hey, there's something different about you. What is it? And that opens up to a really good opportunity for you to be able to actually just share the love of Jesus. And then how can you be a beacon of hope? How can you demonstrate safety and like comfort for the people around you through the way that you love your enemies, um, through the way that you love 
the people that maybe are a little bit more difficult to love. Um, that is how we can stand out. That is how we can show ourselves to be different as kingdom people than the other people in our worlds. So James, thank you so Thanks much for, for joining. Me. You're great. <laughs> Sorry, I started, I yeah, let you finish like, talking, my bad. It's okay, we do that often. Um, anyway, have an amazing week, New Life Youth. Make sure that you like, and you're gonna subscribe as well so that you can get updated when we post more videos, more content. Um, and yeah, go out and be the salt and light this week.